Welcome to the Quick Start Guide for Adaptee's React Native SDK. Today we'll be taking a look at a very simple sample application and then we'll be implementing the Adaptee SDK within the application so you can see how to integrate uh, the SDK into your own app. So first off, we're going to take a look at the code um, and also a quick demo of the functionality of the app as it sits right now. So the app that we've built is called Focus Journal and it's very simple, it just has two screens. It's really just designed to facilitate a, a discussion about how to integrate Adaptee, so the functionality of the app doesn't really matter that much. Um, but just to give you an idea of some basic functionality so you can then actually integrate and get a paywall functional, uh, we've got two screens here. We've got what is, what is your focus today with a text box and a save entry button. Just say film in this tutorial is my focus for today. We're going to hit save entry. Um, I'm going to store that focus and then be able to see that focus along with other ones in a history view. So the way it's implemented right now, if you tap the, the history button, it takes you to a screen that is locked behind a paywall. This paywall is, is fake, basically. It's just a, a very simple uh, screen with a single button on it. It lets you, quote unquote, upgrade to premium. And so we're going to simulate updating to a premium subscription. Then we go back to view history. You can now see the history, which includes a couple of canned entries that are already there and then the one that we added just a minute ago. So this history view is a example of a premium screen that we're gonna lock behind the paywall. So the app is functional, it does everything we want it to do, um, but what it doesn't have is it doesn't have any uh, integration with Adaptee. So what we're gonna do next is to integrate the Adaptee SDK, install it, get it configured, and then uh, get it functional inside the app, and then set it up so that that other view that we saw a moment ago is an actual real paywall and not just uh, sort of a, a demo paywall like we've got implemented right now. All right, so the first step to getting the Adaptee SDK installed into your project, and this is, we're gonna assume a couple of things here um, before we get started on this, on the actual integration. We're gonna assume that you've got an Expo-based React Native project already up and running, and that you're using um, EAS build and not Expo Go. So we're making those assumptions about the way that you've configured your project, um, and that you've also got an app that has at least one in-app purchase Configured in App Store Connect it doesn't have to be, of course, set up in your in your actual project yet, but um, something that you've got set up in App Store Connect, and then you've got an Adaptee account as well. Um, so those are things you'll need to do basically before you get started here, um, and there are directions available to you on the Adaptee website on how to do all of those things. So to actually get started with installing the the SDK, I'm inside my project folder in my terminal. And so I'm going to run a command that will install two different packages. So one is called React Native Adaptee, that's the actual SDK. And the other one is TSLib, which is a TypeScript, TypeScript lib library that is used by React Native Adaptee. Um, and so if you've already got that installed, you can skip that part. But if you don't use it yet, you want to install that along with React Native Adaptee. So I'm going to hit enter on that and let it install. So it installed those packages. Um, and the next step that we're going to want to do is to run a pre-build using Expo tools that will generate um, iOS and Android folders for us. So uh, it's kind of the first step in creating a, a native iOS environment so that we can install the correct uh, CocoaPods. So that command is npx expo pre-build, um, and it's going to run through a whole bunch of steps to uh, set up um, both uh, Android and iOS native folders. Um, it's going to install CocoaPods, it's going to do all kinds of steps. So basically just let it run. And once you have the pre-build step completed, um, you can move on. If you've already done this part, if, if, you've, you know, if you've run this before, then you can skip this step. But uh, if you haven't done it before, you're going to want to run pre-build. So we want to confirm that um, the, pod, the pods are set up correctly. So we're going to uh, go into the iOS folder that was just created by the pre-build step. And then we're going to run pod install. That's going to install all of the Cocoa Pods that are necessary for um, you know, running the project and getting the uh, Adaptee SDK up and running. So uh, it's, it's finished. Um, it is going to tell you that there's a, dep a deprecation notice. Um, uh, at this point, this is the best way to get this functional, but in the future, that might change, so just know that for now. Um, this is fine, but we, there might be a different process for this in the future. So next step is to actually build a specific version of the project. Um, now that we've got that iOS folder and the CocoaPods installed, we're gonna use EAS build 
to create a, a build of the project that will run natively on, uh, in this case, an iPhone. We're going to follow the iOS path. You certainly can do Android if you like, or both, um, but I have an iOS device to test on, so that's what we're going to do for the quick start guide. So you're going to do EAS build profile development, and then platform, in this case, is going to be iOS. And then once you hit enter, you're just going to follow the prompts, whatever it says to do, um, and uh, that will set up your project. All right, so once you run the EAS, EAS build command, it's going to go off to the server and try and build the app for you. It's going to take a little bit of time, um, especially if you're uh, on the free tier. They actually put you in a slower kind of build lane, but if you just wait a little bit, you can get the build. Um, and uh, once it's done, it should display something like this, which gives you a QR code and a way to actually load the app on your device. So you just have to scan the QR code and it will load up the app uh, on your device. Um, and then you can run it, which you can see here in the iPhone mirroring that I've got on my phone. Uh, this is now uh, the Focus Journal app running on my iPhone. Um, it's not doing, it's not actually displaying my app yet because I don't have the Expo server running. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and start that up. So I find sometimes it's actually easier to just scan the QR code that it gives you when you run Expo Start. Um, so I've done that and it went ahead and loaded up the Focus Journal app um, on the, my, my phone. So now we have a version of Focus Journal that has the Adaptee SDK installed. It's not configured yet, but it is installed. Um, and we're running now an EAS build version of our project, our project rather than kind of a standard Expo build. So it's got those native libraries built in and we have the ability to now configure the Adaptee SDK um, and then set it up to actually show a paywall. So we'll do that next. Since we have the Adaptee SDK installed now in our project, we can go ahead and use it to configure uh, the SDK, get it running, and then that gives us the ability to show paywalls and manage the payments and everything. So. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to set up some constants that we're going to be using throughout the project. So in, I've got a Visual Studio Code open here. I'm just going to make a new file, and I'm going to call that file um, Adaptee Constants. And then I'm going to paste in a um, some constants here. So we've got the API key, we've got the access level ID, and we have the placement ID. So those are two, co three constants we're going to be using throughout. The API key is the SDK key that you can get from your Adaptee dashboard. Um, that will help us activate the Adaptee SDK and register it with your account. And then we have the access level ID, which is, um, you can go read up on access levels in our documentation, but basically it describes a certain amount of functionality that you want to unlock with uh, the user paying for something with a subscription. So the default is premium, and that's kind of what a lot of people use. Uh, you're welcome to change the name or use multiple ones, kind of however you'd like to do that best for your app. But in this example, we're going to be using the ID that's just called premium, which is the one that comes by default. And then lastly, placement ID. The idea of a placement is essentially just a place in your app where you're going to show a paywall. So you may just have one placement where you just show it your single paywall and that's it. You may have multiple placements throughout your project, through your app, through your user experience, where people are going to engage with either the same paywall or different paywalls, you know, ones that have different designs, things like that. Um, so it really gives you the ability and the flexibility to, uh, you know, design it however you like. Um, so you'd have to have a placement ID for each of those spots within your project where you want to show a, place, a, a placement and therefore a paywall. So we're going to use the placement ID on tap history because that's where we're going to put the, uh, the paywall. Next, I want to set up the Adaptee SDK itself, configure it for use. So we're going to make another new file here, and we're going to call this Adaptee Service. And in here, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to import um, the Adaptee library from React Native Adaptee. I'm also going to import those constants that we just created, so we can use those. And then I'm going to set up an activation promise, which will essentially set it up so that it activates the Adaptee SDK using the API key. Um, and we can set up this promise elsewhere such that w before you try and use the SDK in any other part of your project, we're making sure that the Adaptee SDK is activated, which is an important first step, right? The, it's not going to work if it hasn't been activated, if we haven't talked to the server and confirmed that everything's good to go. Um, so that's what this promise does. It basically makes it so that that'll happen first, and then you can use the SDK to do whatever other functionality you want. The next thing we're going to do is go into the profile context.js file, which is in the context folder. I'm um, going to make some edits to this. So we're going to actually integrate the Adaptee SDK and use it uh, in here to um, 
to manage our profile to to uh, you know all that kind of stuff to confirm that the subscription has been purchased or it hasn't been purchased and kind of make sure that we're aligned uh, with the server on that so um, in your import area uh, at the top of the file you want to import several things you want to in import the adaptive library you want to import the, those adaptive constants that we just created and you want to import the activation promise from the adaptive service and then next um, after we've exported uh, this constant here um, we're going to come down to below that and we're going to put in a use effect um, and that's going to uh, set up the that's going to activate the adapt SDK so you can see we're awaiting that activation promise make sure that that gets activated in the try block and then we're going to run a function on the adapt um, library called get profile that's going to go fetch the profile for this particular user on the device and that gets all kinds of useful information. So it gets most, maybe most importantly, their access level. Have they paid or have they not yet paid? So we can see here, once we fetch the profile, we grab the access level and then we, we look through it for specifically the access level ID that we're looking for, the premium ID. Um, and then uh, we set the premium state based on whether or not the level is active is in a grace period or is lifetime. You don't need to look for all those things if they're not relevant to your project, um, but we're looking for them in this case because they might be. So um, if it's active, grace period or lifetime, we're gonna set that to, we're gonna set the premium status, the Boolean inside of our profile to true. Um, and so what, what that's doing is essentially every time we launch the application, it's gonna do this and make sure that we either have or have not paid right uh, and we know what that status is so we can either show the paywall if it's required uh, and they try and access some kind of premium feature or if they've paid then we're just going to unlock everything from the start and let them use uh, all the functionality of the project so let's get to actually showing the paywall so over in the home screen.js file we're going to go to the top and we're going to add a few import statements so kind of similar to what we've been we've been doing so far we're going to add the adapty library we're going to um, add the create paywall view um, from the adapty library as well, from specifically the UI section of it, um, the adapty constraint constants file that we created and the activation promise on the adapty service. So those imports will allow us to show a paywall when we need to. Now the next thing is we're going to modify the way that the sample app functions for handling history. So like you've seen in the demo, uh, when you tap the view history button, it's gonna take you either to a paywall view or to the actual history view depending on whether you've paid or not. And in the pre adapt integration uh, state of the app, we were showing like a little dummy paywall that just had a button on it that automatically unlocked you. Uh, and then the next time you would visit the history, it would be unlocked. So we're gonna replace that functionality with an actual real paywall from Adapty, um, and we're going to then handle that the purchase um, and then unlock that functionality once they've paid. So down here in handle view history, this is the function that gets called whenever you tap that button. Right now we're just checking is premium. If it's if that's true, we're gonna take you to history. And if it's not true, we're gonna take you to the paywall view, but it's the dummy paywall that we created from the beginning. So I'm gonna take all of this logic, the the if else, the whole statement, and I'm going to replace it with different logic. And we'll go over what that looks like in just a second here. It's still checking for its premium. And if that's true, then we're gonna to navigate to history. So no change there. If they've paid, they have access to all features, which includes the history view. However, if that's not true, if their premium is false, we're going to jump into this try statement that is going to um, do a few things. It's gonna get the paywall. So the first thing you have to do before you can show it is you have to fetch the paywall because you've, been, you've configured it remotely inside Paywall Builder. We have to get that configuration from the server. So we're gonna go get the paywall. Um, and we do that based on the placement ID that you want. So that way, if you have multiples defined inside of your Adapty dashboard, you can, um, you know, you can fetch them based on which placement ID you're talking about. And then once you have, uh, if, if the paywall has a view configuration, then we're going to create a paywall view, which again is a function that's built into the Adapty SDK based on the paywall configuration. So this is actually constructing a view for us based on that configuration. And then the register uh, event handlers is, is a way for us to define what happens when the paywall view has completed. So the register event handlers has a variety of callbacks in here. So we've got on close button press, on purchase completed, purchase failed, restore completed, restore failed, and rendering failed. 
So those are basically different states that you can end up in once the paywall has been shown and the user has taken some kind of action or some kind of error has occurred. So in the case of close button press, if they just press the close button and kind of dismissed it, that's all that is, is kind of meant there. On purchase completed would be an example where they've actually chosen one of the subscription options you've given them and they've completed that purchase with Apple um, or with Google. And so in that case, it's done and the result is going to be passed back to you along with the product that they chose. You can then inside of that, you can decide what to do with that information. So we're doing it, you know, for this demo, it's pretty straightforward. We're just checking to see if, if it's successful. And if it is, we have a little purchase premium function built into um, our service that essentially more or less just uh, basically updates the is premium Boolean to true. And then we navigate over to history. So we're allowing you to jump right into the premium feature as soon as you pay. Um, and then we've got a couple of, uh, with, with restore completed, it's very similar, right? Because they've restored a previous purchase. So same deal. We're going to purchase premium in that case with the, with the thing. And then we're going to, uh, navigate over to history. We've got then some failures. We've got purchase fail, restore fail, and rendering fail. So purchase and restore fail mean that something happened during either the purchase or the restoration of the purchase that caused a failure. Um, and so that could be something with the Adapt SDK, or it could be with you know the underlying store itself, whether that be the App Store or Google Play. And so you'll receive an error object in there, and then you can handle that error handling sort of you know as you see fit. In this example, we're just displaying the error to the console. You'd want more comprehensive error handling in your production app, but for demo purposes, that's all we're doing. And then rendering failure is an example where the paywall itself failed to render. So that's pretty much uh, adapt the SDK failure that's going to happen in there. It's pretty rare, but it, it, it is possible for it to happen. So that's why it's there. Um, and again, same thing, you're going to get an error object. You can inspect that error object and then do something with that. So one way, one thing that you might try to do in that scenario is if the failure is related to maybe not getting the correct configuration from the remote, uh, from the server, you could instead engage a fallback paywall and we have the ability for you to configure fallback paywalls, which essentially are local paywalls that are stored within the app um, itself uh, as a way to kind of have a backup in case the remote uh, paywall configuration fails. So look up uh, more information about that in our docs, fallback paywalls, and you could, in that particular case, you could engage one of those to give the user the ability to, to have a paywall. Maybe it's not the perfect one, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so now that we have all of that code uh, embedded into our project, we have the ability to test it now. Here you can see in the Focus Journal final demo, we show a paywall, we process the paywall purchase, and once we complete that, we can see the unlocked history screen, which represents our premium content. If we enter in a new Focus for today and save that entry, we'll see that entry added to that history screen as well. It really is that easy to integrate Adapti into your React Native app, and happy coding.